Welcome back to the Push Loop Training Diaries episode two. It's been a while, but I've been traveling, we've been around, uh, and as you might have already guessed, I've had a haircut. Uh, <laughs> so my challenge didn't go according to plan, but that is going to be in a totally different episode. That's old dog, new tricks, uh, and you'll soon find out if the old dog can do the new tricks, I think. This is pretty self-explanatory, but it's not over. But anyway, that's a whole new episode. If this is your first time tuning into the Push Loop Training Diaries, well, you've missed an episode. Episode one has already been, and I suggest you check it out. I'm going to put it up there, actually. I'm going to put it there. So you can click on that on the screen. I suggest you watch that before watching this one. Uh, episode one, Ed Bartek, the Polak, the manager of the TWS Center, uh, pretty much in half an hour going from uh, zero to hero uh, and definitely worth checking out. Uh, if you've already watched it, obviously you've been waiting for this episode too. To, uh, and if you, uh, you know, you do remember it came across in the pub and the whole idea was to get guys motivated to push their limits, to go to that next level. A lot of them have already been doing back loops, but they're kind of... Uh, needed some sort of extra oomph uh, to do the push loop. It's kind of that move. It's like when you first do your first forwards. It's that one where you really got to go for it. Otherwise, it just doesn't happen. Back loop, don't want to be rude. It's one of the coolest moves out there, but it doesn't take big kahunas to do the back loop or at least to try it. Whereas the push loop, it's all or nothing. You don't know uh, until you actually go for it whether you're going to make it or not. The back loop, you can kind of tempt your way round and kind of eat your way. Whereas a push it, you just got to go for it. Uh, anyway, so episode number two. Uh, we've had two guys go already. Colin Dixon, Whippy Dixon. Yeah, we all know what happened there. First run, boom, and he's got his back. We had a, an Ansfo message from him the other day. If you haven't checked that out, it's on windsurfing.tv. Check out, well worth it. Like a little kid, super excited, been landing plane in push loops. Got his mojo back, got his push loop mojo back, and that's good to hear. Uh, we had obviously Bartek land this first one. And three guys guys left. We've got Felix Spencer, Aussie Ripper from Esperance. In Esperance, a lot of wave riding, don't do a lot of jumping. We've got uh, Eric Decker, Dutch uh, crazy man. Uh, he's got a bit of a mouth on him, PE teacher, you know, and he's a good sailor, uh, does both tacks. And we've got Harco, the boss of the TWS Centre. And the TWS Centre is obviously sponsoring the diaries. And we've got to give them a shout out. Uh, they're obviously based in Tenerife in South Bay. So if you're going to South Bay, uh, that is the place to check out. They've basically got all the gear from all the brands. They've got all the new stuff. It just turned up uh, a couple of weeks ago. So they've got all the new boards from all the guys. Uh, they've got all new sails. Like you get it rigged for you. you. Just come in, change it up, whatever. You know, perfect place, South Bay. You can sail up to the harbour wall. Uh, and they've also got the new... Uh, facility behind them, which is basically storage. You've got like 40 odd uh, storage units, can store a couple of boards. You can get your sails racked up on the side, and it's literally, what, 100 meters, 50 meters from the beach. 20 meters it's not very far away just behind so if you want to store your kit in South Bay you're going to Tenerife you've got nowhere to store it you're not going to hire but you want to store it give them a shout if you want to hire stuff give them a shout as well top boys uh, we're going to be featuring Harco the boss uh, in these diaries but first up we're going to go to uh, the ripper the Australian ripper Felix Spencer um, we obviously did the paper scissor rock um Felix was one of the first to go. Colin was actually the first, but Felix was one of the first. Uh, Decker lost out. He went last. Actually thought it was a good thing. Um, and more on that in a minute. So Felix Spencer, first up. Again, all behind the cameras. All giving him, rooting for him in proper Aussie fashion. Uh, first run out. Hey, what's Felix? What's Felix? Felix! Yeah. A rocket, yeah, that seems to be the thing to do, you know, get, you come in, you, you're thinking all these things, you just end up with a rocket. That's all right, that's okay. Second run. He knows there's a bit of pressure on him now, he's just done a rocket. So, busting out, plenty of speed, ramp comes up, and we're all just thinking, oh yeah, oh yeah. No fucking pressure, mate, come on. No pressure, mate, exactly, but there was loads of pressure. And I tell you what, that was a solid effort. First run, he's never done a pushy before, goes up, and it, it looks good. I have to say, everything looked good. He 
just didn't commit. And you, that happens a lot. When you've, you know, you've kind of been thinking it over, he does good back loops, obviously. He comes up and everything is right. If he commits and pushes that rig through, he lands it. But he doesn't commit. He keeps his body weight to the side of the rig, doesn't go over the top of the rig. So he can't get the pressure on the backhand and push the rig out. So then the thing just slows up and it won't rotate. If he'd have just got his weight over the top, pushed his backhand out on the boom, sort of pushed the rig forward, he would have made it. It would have been an absolutely sweet push loop. But he doesn't. Like I said, one hand off salute. <laughs> uh, but it was a good first effort from Felix. So uh, we were thinking, OK, this is on. This, uh, this fella has got some skills. Uh, it's not going to be long before he busts one out. So third one comes up. Um, and obviously now your brain's thinking because you've done one. It's nearly happened. You didn't commit. You're like, OK, next one. So he's going out. He's going out. <laughs> see he wants it he wants to commit but he still doesn't really commit with the board again used to doing back loops holds the board back like he's doing a back loop if you hold that board back when you go up you won't get the rotation you have to let it sort of flow around you have to let it go light and go over the top uh so there he's sort of half back loop half push loop but committed you saw the end result. Um, but yeah, still looking good. Like I said, it's only a couple of attempts in. Uh, fourth, uh, well, third attempt, I will say, uh, it doesn't get the best takeoff. <laughs> there you go. Totally committed. You can hear my screams. It's like the commitment is there, but the takeoff, it's rubbish. It's not, you know, he's not got that flow that he had on the first couple, but the commitment over the rig is getting there. He needs to join those together. You can see progression though. And like I say, this is what happens with the push loop. Um, it's one of those moves you can't kind of build yourself up to. It's do or die. You, you go for it and you commit or you pay the price. Oh, yes, no! He goes for it and then stops. Um, but there we go. That was kind of uh, the first attempts from Felix. And he was looking really good. So meanwhile, why Felix is uh, throwing himself into his push loops, Harko has got his uh, sort of lunchtime hour off and he is pushing as well. So he turns up at the beach. He hasn't been to see us yet. He doesn't even know he's in the club, goes out. Lands a nice back in, you're like, okay, Harko. Then he comes in, gets a bit of a chat. So we give him a bit of a chat um, and he goes straight out. And he looks like a man on a mission. Mr. TWS. What do you reckon, boys? Give me some this predictions. One, this one, this one. So yeah, not a bad effort. That was his first run. So a little bit of a just to, you know, to explain what do goes out and uh, a pretty solid effort. Not the best ramp really because he comes off the side of it a little bit higher. He would have made it. No question about it. Uh, comes in and uh, going back out. He's not got a lot of speed. He's kind of just pumping to get going. He's on. I like Donkey Kong, not my speed. Go for it. And takes the death crash straight on the sail. Full commitment. That's what we like to see. But like I say, didn't have a lot of speed. But he was so intent on doing it. He's got all the boys on the beach. You know he wants it. Just doesn't have the forward uh, momentum speed. Uh, and you need that little bit of speed. Obviously, you're going to turn it away. But you need to be travelling a little bit forwards. Then you can get the pressure in the rig, which will upright uh, the board. Um, it's like a shove it. You know, if you do a shove it with no speed, you can't get any apparent wind on the back of your sail. And that's what uprights you. So some solid, solid efforts from Harco there, just throwing it down. Um, and it was getting tricky. At this point, the seaweed took hold. Um, 
Yeah, and I'm not joking. Cabezo, it doesn't always get like this. You get this maybe once a year, maybe once every couple of years. I haven't seen it like this for three years. But the weeds started collecting up, and it was really a bit of a struggle to get going. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of it. So we, uh, what do we do when that happens? Well, we send uh, Eric Decker out, don't we? Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> but Eric didn't quite have the right sail, and he was dogging around. He was hardly moving. And when you want to do push loops... Big tip, go overpowered. If you think it's 4-2 weather, take a 4-5 at least, maybe even a 4-7 because it doesn't hurt you being overpowered. It actually makes it a lot easier and it makes your mistakes. Uh, usually most people under-rotate or don't give it enough ump. When you're overpowered, that really helps you uh, get the rotation speed and landing on your back, trust me, is better than landing straight through your sail. So take a bigger sail. Eric, he came in. He had to change up. And we thought this was a good time to take a break, uh, go back, just analyse the footage. Obviously, this uh, amount of action is condensed. It feels like it's only been on for a couple of minutes. But this was, you know, trying to find ramps, busy people around. Uh, we obviously had Bartek already gone, Colin, so a lot of time gone. So we went back, checked the footage out, came back for the afternoon session. Unfortunately, Harko couldn't make the afternoon session. Got to go back to work. He's at the TWS Centre. Um, but uh, one man who could, Felix Spencer. Uh, and he came charging out for his, uh, his run after lunchtime. And he looked like he was going to be uh, properly on for it. Oh. So as you can see, in the end, Felix, uh, I mean, the commitment from Felix definitely is enough. Just needs to work on getting in his head, you know, because sometimes you just need to feel the move. And uh, once you feel it, you know, it takes a few times to get it. Sometimes you can just luckily, you go for it and everything kind of works out and you feel it straight away. Other times you have to get your head in the groove. You have to feel the move. And you can see Felix is uh, building up to that. Um, so, yeah, there we go. And now we move on to Eric Decker. Yes, this is Eric Decker's time in the afternoon. So he drew uh, Paper, Scissor, Rock, thought he'd done the good one, you know, got last, gets to see everyone else. Wind's meant to build all day. And as I said, the wind started dropping. The weed came up. Um, and it was an ideal condition. So he's already changed his sail. He's on to his 4-7 now. And he's just not quite going. But it doesn't stop him. No, 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 no. Eric, he's going for it anyway. Oh! So his first one, as you can see, um, the body wants it, but the rig and the, you know, the gear, you know, he's not really throwing it up. He's not really ju he's just throwing himself into it, but it's not quite of got the feel of the gear. There's no lift in the gear. Uh, so next one, uh, you know, you've just done one. You think, okay, I didn't quite get the rotation. What do I do next? Well, this is what you do next. Yeah. yeah, you just feel the rotation. You just try and you try and go up, and it always looks bad. I have this when I'm trying to move. When I was trying to shift these every day, you kind of go up and you try and imagine your head without committing fully because you don't quite get it. So you kind of do it, and you're like, oh, but it looks a bit shit. But in your head, you're like, okay, yeah, I, I, you've you've worked something out usually. Uh, next run, thinks he's worked something out, so he goes out, and in his head, I'm sure he's just like, right, I'm gonna just throw this thing. <laughs> and he does throw it. He throws his whole body, but forgot to take off. <laughs> Pretty much does a push loop in the wave. It almost uh, comes back on the wave. Could be a new move. Uh, but a lot of commitment there, a lot of aggression. But he just needs to get the height, needs to get a bit of float, needs to get the whip. Um, so, yeah, that's how it's going for Eric at the moment. Uh, next run out. Yeah, pretty good attempt, that one. So next one out, like you say, you can see as he's coming up, you can just go in through the patches of weed. You can see it's just slowing down, gets a good ramp, and you can see it's not quite going, but 
you know, all the boys are on the beach. You've got to throw that thing down. So he goes up and you can see he doesn't quite get the lift. You can actually see all the weed coming off his fin as he takes off. You can just see it flying through the air. But because of that, you never quite get that lift, that little bit of rotation. But a good effort stays a little bit to the side of the kit, which means it doesn't fully rotate, but it does have to do, I think, a lot with the weed. So we'll, we'll have to give him benefit of the doubt because conditions from then on, well, they got worse. It was meant to get windy throughout the day. It was meant to stay up. But that, with that weed coming through and the wind dropped a bit, it kind of shot us in the foot. So there was a few other attempts going down that day, but it just didn't quite come to it. So that was the end of day one. Now, when we made this uh, sort of pact, this, this deal in the pub, I can't even remember if it was for the day or just to do it. But the, basically, the main goal was to get guys throwing themselves to get them actually out of their comfort zone, pushing their own limits uh, to do the push loop. Um, and that definitely worked. So end of day one, I decided that we were going to extend this, if it was for one day, we wasn't even sure, uh, for the whole week. The forecast was was okay. We were going to get the odd day. I was still here. I still had the camera and I'd seen a massive improvement with attitude and how people were just throwing themselves. It was such a good laugh. I wanted more of it. So we extended it um, till the next weekend. So we had about six days, I think, left of my trip. Uh, so we extended it. Um, and I'm going to have, sorry, because I've, I can't even think where we are. I need to check out the footage. That's going to come up in episode three. I'm going to go through it now. And I'll, it, the episode three will come out probably two days after this episode two. So sorry if you were waiting to see who had the hair shaved because there was a few nervous people. Obviously, first day, Felix didn't do it. He's got a fair head of hair. Rumor was uh, he was talking about uh, maybe, uh, you know, throwing in the head shave and maybe just getting his balls waxed. I think I said it again. I said I'll wax my balls instead of having my head shaved. Oh, oh. well, oh. that could be an alternative. That, that could be a good alternative. I'm not waxing them though. <laughs> Me neither. What? <laughs> Don't worry, we wasn't going to film it. We, we would only film uh, the facial expressions. But anyway, you're going to have to wait for episode three to see if he got his balls waxed <laughs> or he got his head shaved or whether he made it or not. So stay tuned. Episode number three coming up after this one. Um, Harco, Felix and Eric Decker. What will happen? Uh, big thanks to TWS Centre in Tenerife. Like I said, if you're going to Tenerife, give the boys a shout. Uh, Tenerife Windsurfing Solutions is where it's at. You better watch windsurfing.tv or I kick your ass, motherfuckers. <laughs>